Well, hello there. I thought I'd take a minute and make a video. Recently, OpenAI, which is a website that has all kinds of cool tools, came out with a new feature or a new tool that's called ChatGPT. And it's an AI or an artificial intelligence tool that allows you to type in questions or topics, and it can generate a whole answer for you, all based on the collective knowledge that's on their database. And because of it, it's been a big topic right now on Twitter and some message boards and on Facebook, especially among teachers and also higher ed, because there are great concerns for students using this tool for nefarious reasons reasons to be able to cheat on essays and written assignments. Um, it's not the only tool that's out there, but I think that it's getting so much attention because it's a pretty strong tool and it will only get stronger because AI is able to do that. It has a whole learning component so that it becomes more um, more intelligent as it goes along. So I know that there are a bunch of ways that you can find out if a student has written something on their own or not, but I'm going to teach you how to use Google Docs to be able to go in and discern between something that is written by a student by hand and something that is copied and pasted from the internet. So I'm hoping that you'll find this helpful. So I'm going to start first with a copy and paste essay. That's what I have here. So actually I had ChatGPT write this essay for me. I asked them how to determine if a student has cheated while writing an essay and then it came back with this answer for me. You're welcome to check it out. Hit pause and read it if you find it fascinating. To me the writing that comes out of the OpenAI chatbot is very prescriptive. Um, it, it's great example of what we're trying to get our kids to do but it doesn't show a lot of creativity it's also very diplomatic it doesn't very often choose sides it'll say it depends on the situation anyways if you want to play with it you have to create an account on OpenAI. we have that blocked so our students can't access it but know that there are always tools on the internet that our students are looking for in order to get around the actual work that they need to do to learn um, there is we try to keep up with it but we also as teachers have to figure out other ways besides blocking things to keep up with our students. So this is an essay that I generated on the chatbot and then all I did was I hand typed my heading at the top here and then I pasted in my essay. And then I'm going to also show you on this tab, this is a written essay. This one again, I hand wrote the whole thing. Part of it you'll see as I go through it. This first paragraph here I wrote by hand. This paragraph here I wrote by voice typing, which I do pretty often, something I've become pretty good at, including punctuation. And then down here, again, we have typed by hand content. So what I'm going to show you behind the scenes is how you can tell the difference. So we're going to go back to the copy and paste essay. And let me move my little thing here. And I'm going to go to file. And then I'm going to go to version history and I'm going to choose C version history. So if there were more than one student working in this particular essay, you would see different colors. So because it's only me, you're only seeing green. If there were two or three students in there, then the work that they each did would be a different color code. You'll also say the green over here matches my name, so you know that all the green is Susie. But there's also no little down arrow, so I can click the history goes from the bottom up. So I'm going to click on the bottom one first. This shows you where we started, and we started with a blank screen, and then I told you that I I had typed that heading by hand. I believe that the updates happen every 30 to 50 seconds on Google depending on your connection. So this next one shows everything all coming in at once, including the small part that I typed by hand. You have to keep in mind that I type about 60 words a minute, sometimes faster if I'm paying attention, sometimes slower if I'm interrupted or rereading or fixing or making an, er making an error. So you can tell that everything was all put in at one time because this is the only piece of history that I have for this document to write all of that and there's no way that even I could type all of that in under one minute so that it's caught in one picture and let me show you by example what I mean I'm gonna to go to my other essay that I did by hand and again I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to version history and then I'm gonna to go to see version history 
And like I said before, we start at the bottom and work our way up when we're looking at the history on the right hand side. Similarly, this one only has two entries. The bottom one, when I click on it, is the blank document when the document was created. But this one up here, you're going to see, looks a little different because it has this down arrow. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to uncollapse all of the activity that ha happened on this document. And again, I'm starting at the bottom and working my way up. So if I click on the bottom one, I can see that I've done my heading and I've started my essay. And you can tell that's about a minute's worth of work if I'm typing nonstop without looking at my keys because it's all um, site typing, touch typing. So we go to the next one up, which is um, one minute later, we're at 3.20 now, and you'll see that I'm still doing hand typing, only using my fingers, making corrections as I go along maybe, doing some rereading, and then we go to 3.21, and I'm finishing up that paragraph. So this is an indication that I am writing this myself. Yes, I could have copied and pasted one sentence at a time from different places. That's where your professional judgment is going to come into play, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But now we're going to jump. We've gone from 321 to 323. So when I click on 323, an entire paragraph jumps in, and that's because this particular one I voice typed. I used the um, voice to text tools that we have available on here and most um, students know how to use those. So there's a chance that they're using them. The one thing is is that our students are not very adept at using the punctuation and speaking in the language of punctuation when they do a voice typing assignment. So you'll see them typing but you won't hear them say some computers also have the ability to do speech to text period. That is what I am doing in this paragraph period. It means that I am able to get more words on the screen faster than I would be able to as I type, period. They don't know how to put in commas, comma. They don't know how to put in colons, comma. They really don't know how to do any of that. Sometimes when I'm leaving a voicemail for people, I'll even speak with punctuation and I sound like a doofus. So it, it takes time and practice to be able to do that. And then at 326, which is three minutes after this one, I go in and you can see that I've added in the rest, which I typed by hand. Again, touch typing. What it does say at the bottom here, and you're welcome to go back and pause this and read it, is that even though I'm giving you some tools to give you an um, idea of whether or not something was copied and pasted into an assignment, or if it was constructed more step-by-step, -step, either by typing or by voice typing, it still comes down to that student and what is typical work for that student. We, of course, expect them to improve over the course of a semester or a school year, or even over the course of a couple of weeks if we're working on a certain skill. But you know as their teacher what it is that they normally do in their writing. So your job is to compare past pieces of writing and again go in and look at their history and see does it develop in a similar way that this particular assignment did. Go back in and if they're using voice typing and they say that they did, I wouldn't bring it up to them, but if they tell you they did, well then ask, oh my gosh, I've been trying to get better at that. Can you show me how it works? And have them do it on another screen and see if they speak with their commas and with their punctuation and see if it's something that they are adept at, something that they can do efficiently. And I would also say that you also want to kind of talk to the students about their work. We're not just working behind the scenes to catch them, although part of that is what we want to do. We want to do the investigation to be able to just say, this is it, we know it's cheating. But also having that conversation with the student and seeing how much they already know, and maybe there was a struggle to get it on the page, and maybe they do know the content, or maybe they don't at all. But that conversation is essential when it comes to working with your students, especially those who normally struggle and perhaps are now showing tremendous growth, and you're not sure where that's coming from. So know that it's a two-way street and that as teachers we have a lot of tools at our discretion to be able to figure that out but I hope that today's little video is helpful to you and if you have any questions don't hesitate to reach out to me thanks for listening